Okay, g'day everybody and welcome to another video. Uh, today I want to continue programming our AI or neural net library and I want to concentrate uh, a little bit on filling out the matrix class since that's really the base of, uh, of everything that we're going to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to be putting the source code for this video up for the Patreons just as a big thank you for uh, supporting what I'm doing here and really making this, uh, this video possible. Yeah, that's, uh, it's really, really good of you. So thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like to support what I'm doing or you'd like to get access to the source code and various other, I would say fairly irrelevant videos, <laughs> jump, over to, uh, jump over to Patreon. Uh, some interesting input from last time. OJ002 suggested that we use singles. And I think that's a really, really good idea. So uh, I think I should come clean and say the, uh, the real reason why I was using doubles uh, it's really because I was studying the uh, matrix product or performance matrix product and you get down to blocking. It's, it's all about blocking on, on basically as many levels as you can. Uh, you end up blocking in the registers and you can get uh, a lot of what they call register pressure, which is really just running out of, of registers. So uh, I was really using uh, uh, doubles just because uh, blocking with the registers is, uh, you know, it's, it takes up half as many uh, registers. Uh, but I agree with the, with the Odge 002 uh, singles is probably the way to go, and I'm not sure about the uh, about the accuracy, but uh, I think I think that will be uh, just fine. Yeah, so thank you very much for the suggestion. I think we will switch to singles. Good stuff. Oh, floats, I should say, 32-bit floats. Yeah, singles. <laughs> Someone I'm going to call Mac. I'm not sure um, how to pronounce your name. Sorry, uh, but I'll call you Mac. And uh, suggested that we use something which is uh, more universal, something which is more cross-platform than uh, my, what did I use, uh, Aligned Malik? Yeah, said that that was um, Microsoft specific. Yeah, so I think that's a really good suggestion too, but there was, a, a, is it uh, Arumus? Arumus said that um, on Mac, there's no Aligned Malik and there's no STD Aligned Alec either. Uh, so maybe, um, Maybe we haven't quite resolved that yet. I'd like to get something completely cross-platform. Uh, if we can't, and I understand it's not always possible, um, we can always put guards up. But um, yeah, if we can have a bit of a chat in the comments section to this video, uh, I'd really like to resolve that. That'd be great. Uh, for now, I think we'll just leave it at the aligned malloc that I was using last time. Yeah, but uh, if a Arumus can have a bit of a look for STD aligned alloc instead of just STD aligned, maybe you'll find that. Or if you can check if uh, align as is possible on Mac. Uh, okay, so here we are in uh, in C++. Let me just, uh, there we go. Uh, all right, so, so today I wanted to start coding some of the functions that we're going to need in our matrix class. Uh, it's important to fill out the matrix class. It's sort of the basis for, for everything that we're going to be doing. And there's so many different ways that we can uh, go about uh, coding up a matrix class. But what I'll say is that we're not after a complete blas library here. There's a, there's a, a library or a, I guess a set of routines, uh, which is called blas. I think it's short for basic uh, linear algebra subroutines. Uh, we're only going to be coding the functions that we really need yeah, for our particular implementation. So today we might have a go at uh, coding a standard matrix product. And I want to say that in the long run, we're going to spend a lot of time on the matrix product. This is really where uh, all of the performance comes from. And for me, it's, it's really the interesting part about programming a high performance neural net is exactly how do you code uh, the fastest possible matrix product. So that's going to be exciting when we get to that sort of stuff. Uh, really looking forward to it. But for today, we're just going to do a standard uh, n cubed uh, matrix product. Yeah, so if we just come down here to our little matrix class and we hit enter a couple of times. So I want to say that there are, um, there's known uh, faster algorithms than n cubed for matrix product. There's something called Strassen's algorithm which was the first uh, faster than n cubed. Uh, but the trouble with those, I think another one is uh, maybe Coppersmith Winograd or something like that. Uh, the trouble with those is that there's, uh, there's a considerable overhead to, to getting rid of the multiplications. So although on paper uh, they look faster, you end up with a lot of overhead um, yeah, trying to get rid of the multiplications, which is really the objective of, of Strassen's algorithm, to get rid of a multiplication here and there. And the other thing is that um, Strassen's algorithm or, or Coppersmith Winograd, if that's what it's called, um, they don't use caching in the same way. So the n cubed matrix product, the uh, naive matrix product, 
tends to be much, much faster and much, much more interesting to optimize too. So that's what we're going to be going with. As far as I know, all of the uh, Blas libraries use this, uh, use the n cubed method. Yeah, so that's what we'll go with. And we'll say matrix uh, ampersand A and matrix ampersand B. Okay, so for our standard matrix product, what we'll do, we'll just put a little um, member method here called mul, and it's going to take two matrices, A and B. It's going to perform the dot products uh, between the rows of A and the columns of B, and it's going to store the result in this matrix. Um, okay, that's good. How do we do that? Let's... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, the, the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we can actually multiply these two matrices. So I'll say if A uh, columns does not equal B dot columns, sorry, B dot rows. Now uh, we might just throw uh, columns of matrix A must equal rows of matrix B. Yeah, something like that. So we don't have a great deal of error uh, handling in here. What's happened here? I think he wants an S on the end. There you go, B, brother. You can have an S. Uh, but we will check these couple of things. So something else that we want to make sure of is that this matrix or the destination that's actually going to store the product, we have to make sure that's not the same as matrices A or B. Uh, since if it's the same as either matrix A or B, then we're actually going to be overriding data uh, whilst we compute. Uh, if we're trying to do this quickly, I mean, we could just copy everything, but let's not. So let's just make sure that um, this matrix, so this uh, does not equal ampersand A. Sorry, I'll change that to equal. So if this matrix equals matrix A or uh, this equals matrix B. And that, that's addresses there too. We're checking addresses if it's actually the same matrix. Yeah, not the same values. We want to know if it's the same data. Um, throw. Um, destination matrix must be distinct from matrices A and B. What's happened here? There's a four in there. There we go. Alrighty, so. For the standard matrix product, you just need three nested for loops. That's pretty simple, really. We've coded it before in another video, I think, when we were looking at caching. Yeah, but we're going to look a lot more at caching um, in the future. For now, let's just go uh, int uh, shared dim for the shared dimension equals a dot columns or b dot rows. Doesn't matter because they're the same value. Uh, okay, so for int r for row equals zero, while well, r is less than What's it going to be? A rows, uh, R plus plus, and for int C equals zero, while C is less than B dot columns, uh, C plus plus, I get it. Uh, for int D for dot equals zero, while D is less than shared dim, uh, D plus plus, and we'll go float total. Okay, so we did decide to change the um, the data type to float. So let's do that now. Uh, equals 0, 0.0 f. And if I just scroll up and try and find all of the places where we said double, here we go. That's a float. Uh, I don't think it'll make a great deal of difference on the um, on the accuracy of our net. And I think, as uh, as viewers have pointed out, it might make an amazing difference on performance. <laughs> yeah. So happy to do that. Let's uh, scroll down a bit more. See if there's any more doubles lurking around. No, I think that's just about all of them. Yeah, I think that's all of them. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, total, this is the dot product bit, plus equals uh, a dot. Have we not got a, no, we don't. Okay, we better make a, sorry, we have to make some method to access the elements of the uh, matrices before we can do this uh, dot product line just here. I was sort of skipped a bit. Uh, let's override the 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 parentheses operator. Yeah, I think that's a really nice way to do it because it means that you can kind of access the elements just using uh, array notation. Yeah, except instead of um, square brackets, you use uh, circular brackets or parentheses. Uh, double ampersand <laughs> uh, operator, those little things there and a bit of an int and row and then a bit of a here's your and col. And then we go return data. It's gonna be row plus col times rows. Yeah, something like that. What, mate? Oh. 
Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I forgot already, we're using floats. So in the source code, I am actually adding um, comments. Yeah, so I, I just feel it's easier to do some of this explanation stuff off camera. Okay, but anyway, now, now, now that we've got some way to access the values of our matrices, we can use, um, or we can finish our dot product. So A, uh, what's this gonna be, row and D, actually R and D, and multiplied by B, uh, D and C for column. Yeah, slightly confusing. If none of that makes any sense whatsoever, just have a quick look at uh, maybe Wikipedia's um, matrix uh, product page. Yeah, it's all it's all pretty uh, pretty well explained. But um, this uh, oh well, they're going to have to use the operator thing, I think. Okay, well this is a little bit awkward, but we we have to set the value of this uh, matrix to whatever we just computed then. So uh, row, oh, I keep doing the same thing. Uh, equals total. Yeah, there we go. There we go. A standard n cubed matrix product. So this is not going to be fast at all. This is going to be really, really slow. But that's the fun of it all. How do we make it fast? Uh, okay, so maybe just one more uh, thing that we can add to this uh, just before we finish up for today. Something else slightly fun, I think, is called the Hadamard product or Hadamard multiplication. Um, it's a pretty strange name for, for a very simple operation. So in the normal matrix product, we're computing dot products of the rows and the columns. But in the Hadamard product, what we actually do is just multiply each element of, of matrices. So what we'll find is that there's actually, there's a, there's a whole bunch of little operations from the standard BLAS libraries that we really need to implement in order to make forward propagation and backward propagation work. So the matrix product itself is actually used in, I think, both forwards and backwards propagation. Uh, Hadamard product is only used in back prop. Uh, so let's just cut up a quick Hadamard product. Uh, I'll go void and I'll call it Hadamard and I'll just zoom in a bit because I can't really see anything. This screen's small. Nobody cares. Uh, a. Um, Okay, so Hadamard product couldn't be any easier, really. If we just go for int i equals zero, while i is less than this uh, total, i plus plus, and then we say something like uh, data i multiplied equals a dot data i, we should be right as rain. Uh, something we could be careful of up here, in order for that to work out, we actually need to make sure that they both have the same number of elements, since if they don't, um, we're really in trouble. Uh, further than that, we, we really want to make sure that um, they actually have the same dimensions. So I'll say uh, if this uh, rows does not equal a uh, rows or uh, this columns does not equal a columns, then we might just throw a bit of a uh, row. Well, I'll say matrices. Matrices must be of the same dimensions to had a mod. Yeah, something like that. So I think just before we go, we might just do one more little thing just because uh, at this point, uh, implementing these operations is super simple. So we might just add another uh, couple of functions. I'll say add and we'll change this to add and we'll change this to add. Okay, so that's an element-wise add just there. So it takes a matrix and it adds all of the elements uh, to the corresponding elements. Uh, we might make another function down here called sub. And this is gonna pretty much do the same thing, just an element-wise uh, subtraction. And I think, I think that's about all that we need uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what we're doing today, so there's 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 a couple more functions that we've still got to implement, but uh, I think that's a pretty good place to leave it for today. Yeah, exciting stuff. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting when we come to use all of this stuff, and I think it'll all kind of make a bit more sense when we come to actually use it. Like, okay, so I'll be putting the source code up for the Patreons as a big thank you. Yeah, it really means a lot to me that you people support what I'm doing here. Uh, I will be commenting the code. Uh, that I put up and you'll notice uh, each episode to episode the code will change slightly uh, just with the addition of comments 
And as we were talking about before, if you've got any ideas on uh, a universal way to allocate uh, aligned memory, uh, please leave a comment below and uh, we can have a bit of a chat. Uh, we can really build a, a, a much higher quality um, library uh, if, we all, if we all work together. So thank you very much for your input, people. Uh, just beautiful stuff. Yeah, so on that note, uh, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope that was interesting and uh, look forward to making more uh, very shortly. Yeah, so the, the, the next video that, uh, that I'll be uploading will be uh, a small history on C++, just, uh, just because I'm excited about C++20 coming along. And I also thought it might be nice to share a little bit of uh, my personal history with, uh, with programming in, uh, in C++ in particular. Yeah, it should be good stuff. It was, a, it was a fun video. Jump over to Facebook and say a bit of a hello. You could leave a comment down below if you want. You can subscribe to the channel. You can do whatever you want. Most of all, I want you to have a really good day. Adios. Thank you for watching.